Hello. Hello, it's Ray and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to be doing some concept art and I'm going to take you through the journey of what I do to kind of make a drawing. Today I'm going to be using Clip Studio Paint and I'll include all the brushes I use in the description. In a recent attempt to find some inspiration from outside my normal comfort zone, I watched the movie Dune. I have never been the hugest fan of sci-fi movies, but I had heard a lot of good things about Dune. <coughs> yeah, yeah gr great movie. <laughs> and although I didn't understand the movie when I watched it, I was captivated by the gorgeous visuals and the interesting technologies it presented. However, by far the biggest thing that captured me was the landscapes of the movie. A lot of Dune takes place in a dusty desert planet. But kind of ironically, a lot of the sandy dunes that they showed reminded me of snow. And by the time I finished watching the movie, I had a pretty clear picture of a very odd scenery that I really wanted to draw. Since I had a few scenes in mind already, I decided to lay down some of the ideas as rough compositions. When it came to these, I did a ton of them as they were fairly thumbnail sized and very much sketches that reflected what I wanted to see very roughly. I tried my best to keep to a pleasing composition, but due to my lack of practice with this method, I found it kind of difficult. But when I actually did it for a while, I settled finally on a composition that I was quite happy with. I then went to Pinterest, as all artists do, to find a bunch of references. I've been told that referencing one picture when it comes to drawing concept art is a hindrance. So I decided to stick to that principle and use a ton of references. I would scour Pinterest with the most abstract terms like snow or snow art or shipwreck or just random things that I thought would make the painting interesting and I found a lot of pictures that drew my attention and I compiled all of them into a mood board. This took me a while but I think this was a great choice on my part because I don't normally do this kind of thing for a single drawing but doing it for this particular drawing helped me a lot in terms of serving as a reference not just in the forms or the values of the pictures or the compositions of the pictures but serving a more atmospheric reference point as well when it came to drawing snow and drawing landscapes that I've never seen. When I had compiled all the reference images and created my mood boards, it was time to start drawing. And the composition I mentioned earlier, that changed and evolved over time into what you currently see on screen. I am currently in this part of the drawing trying to lay down the background to the foreground of the drawing. Just as I would do a background study, I thought that the clouds required a lot of direction and unlike a background study where the direction is directly referenced from the image that I'm using to draw the background, when I create my own concept work, I thought I can be a little bit more intentional with what I do. So here I'm trying to draw attention to the far side of the piece with the two monolithic mountains that the entire drawing is at least supposed to be directed towards. Although I don't know a great deal about the rules of composition and the various methods used by professionals to make sure the compositions are pleasing, I tried to put this entire drawing into the rule of thirds grid, giving my large mountain face a prominent part of the drawing 
and giving all of my other elements secondary roles. to the details of the boat and the foreground elements of the drawing, I really tried to be as precise as I could with the drawing, but I also didn't want to lose the painterly vibe that I had going on. So instead of using hard line art, what I did was I colored the thing in and kind of rendered the shapes and the patterns and the elements out and then used a very soft line brush to go over the parts that I thought required more detail. When drawing the humans that occupy the foreground and blend into the background as a drawing, I wanted them to stand out as opposed to the boat element and also the mountain that occupies the background. Because humans and the, the people who are walking towards it are kind of like the bridge that bridges the foreground of the painting with the background of the painting, I also wanted them to be harmonious color-wise. So although I picked a lot of colors that are very similar, I also was careful to pick a very textured brush when drawing human, so as to be sure that they also were very clearly contrasted by the lighting and by the shadows that fell on them. Wrapping this piece up, I also noticed that there was a very easy change made in a drawing by a very small amount of elements. Like, for example, some of the elements that I added at the very end of the drawing contributed to the atmosphere so much so that if I tried to remove them, they would entirely change the kind of feel of the drawing. To show you what I mean, when I started pulling individual elements out of the drawing to test this, I realized that even the smallest things like the barely visible line art made a huge difference in a drawing that I didn't necessarily think the line art would make any difference in, which was very interesting to me. And going into this drawing, I didn't really expect it to turn out as fun as it did or as well as it did. But at the end of it, I do think that Drawing this from an inspiration that I necessarily wouldn't have considered otherwise made me try out a lot of new things and think more meticulously about the elements and think more meticulously about what I wanted my final piece to look like. And overall, I think it was a great learning experience and it was probably the most productive drawing I've done this entire month actually. So to wrap this up guys, thank you so much for watching if you watched this far and I will be back with another video soon and I hope to see you then. Thank you. Bye! <laughs>